Hey footy fans, a real special round of football. Round six, the Anzac round, got underway on Friday night up in the west at Opta Stadium. Fremantle falling to the Dogs, 69 to 118. Well done to the Dogs. A strong win on the road for them, a great result. And it was just a great team effort uh, from the Doggies. From what we saw uh, from the efforts in Gather Round, it was there. They just couldn't get over the line against Port. But in this game, uh, they got the ball forward. They were great uh, in attack, and they definitely found those goals. And uh, just a, a solid win from them. Frio, on the other hand, struggling at times this season. Saturday, Port Adelaide beat the Eagles 109-69. to Connor Rosie, another great game for him. And Port rack up another win for their 2023 season. On the other hand, the Eagles just can't seem to find four points throughout these last few weeks. The Giants lost to the Lions 87 to 108. Charlie Cameron kicked seven goals for the Lions. A good effort by the Giants, uh, but the Lions just too powerful in the end. The Cats against the Swans, the grand final rematch. Well, it was a bit of deja vu. The Cats absolutely thumped the Sydney Swans, 130 to 37. The premiership celebrations, uh, you know, the raising of the flag at the Cattery. Many greats were in attendance and the Cats put in an absolute show. They're just so strong at home in front of that crowd. Uh, well done to Geelong on getting a dominant victory. On Sunday, we had the Hawks against the Crows. 76 to 79, the final scores. The Hawks just fall short by those three points. The Hawks play so much better in Tasmania. There's just that sense of urgency when they're up in Tassie. Darcy Fogarty, so accurate. He kicked the winner for the Crows and they just uh, got the job done in time with about a minute and 30 seconds to go. Another win for the Crows. The Hawks, unfortunately for them, still on the bottom of the ladder and struggling. The Blues took on the Saints uh, and the Blues losing 60 to 82. A great bounce back win for the Saints. Uh, Blues not too good. No Adam Sard in this game. Still without Sam Doherty. You just feel like there's a lack of structure and leadership uh, from that back line to give that run and carry and really feed uh, the forward line. And the Saints, uh, just too good in the end. Great to see Tim Membry back in action and get a goal or two here or there. The Suns took on the Ruse. The Suns, well, they get the job done on the home turf. 97 to 54, the final scores. Jared Witts was back for them. He kicked a goal. Uh, he was great in the ruck contest. And speaking of ruckman, uh, well done to Todd Goldstein. His 300th game, an incredible mile. Milestone, uh, you know, although we didn't get the result for Goldie, he still was greater. And just to see him out there and see over his career how loyal he's been to our team and to our club, really proud of you, Goldie, and well done on your 300th. On Monday, we had the Monday night Anzac Eve uh, classic game between the Demons and the Tigers. The Demons, 96-78. to 78. The Tigers' pressure, it was there. It was brilliant. But in that second half, they struggled. They weren't nailing the fundamentals of football, and they were inaccurate, and the Demons took full advantage and got a great comeback victory. Speaking of comeback victories, Collingwood Classic from the Pies. What a comeback on Anzac Day. Uh, just great ceremony throughout the whole round, whether it be... Uh, you know, the opener on Friday night up in the West, or you had, uh, obviously, the Anzac Eve one, which is just a beautiful sight um, with the spotlights, uh, flashlights, I should say, and everything and the torch going around the MCG. And then you get uh, to the big one on Anzac Day, the Pies and the Bombers. Uh, just a great day to reflect on so many who have served and fought for our country. Uh, what a game of football. The Bombers... They kicked away in that third quarter, and I thought it was over. I thought, gee, the Pies are going to struggle here to maybe come back. But they fought back the Pies that fourth quarter, and the Anzac Day medalists thoroughly deserved. Nick Dacos, two goals, 40 disposals, 604 metres gained. And I know there's been a real constant praise for Nick over these last few weeks and to start this season on social media. But he deserves every single bit of it. And I know some are arguing that, oh, he gets the easy disposals off the kick-ins. 
But no, the, the real uh, reason why he gets the praise is not only he gets all those disposals, whether it be the kick-ins or whether it be just his smart IQ around the football, it's his running ability and awareness with the football, not only in, but out of hand as well. And also his ability to get forward and kick goals, which were crucial in this game. He definitely sparked his team in that fourth quarter. Well done, Nick. The old man was proud up in the grandstands, and so was the whole footy world, because you're an absolute superstar at such a young age. 95,179 people in the house at the MCG. That's the biggest Anzac Day crowd uh, record-breaking, and don't we love to see it? Folks, it's time for Isaac's GMP of the round. Let's get straight into it. My goal of the round goes to the miracle man, Charlie Cameron. Oh, gee, what a goal. He just flicked his boot out like it was a tap-in in in soccer. Well done, Charlie. He just got that little delicate touch on it and got it through for the goal. I couldn't believe it. The score review uh, was all confirmed and it was a goal. I don't know where he plucked that one out of, but that was one of the seven. And that one definitely stood out out of all seven goals by Charlie. My mark of the round goes to the youngster in Jacob Van Royen from the Demons. A great Specky on Bolter. A fantastic young player. Not only with great mitts on him, uh, but just he got three goals in this game. How he presents himself to the football. Contested marks. He's there when it matters. And in that last quarter, he was huge for his side. So a huge well done uh, to Jacob Van Royen. My player of the round. To be honest, folks, it was between Nick Dacos or uh, this man who I'll just announce in a sec. Marcus Bontempelli from the Western Bulldogs. I looked at Nick Dacos' performance and I just thought, you know, he was great. But I looked at the Friday night game and just watching that game, the player who stood out to me was Marcus. And I know the dogs kicked away and got a solid win and it was a great closeout by them. But Bontempelli, two goals, 31 disposals. 10 tackles, that was the key that really pushed me into getting the player of the round uh, because his ability uh, to really be intense around the football and stay on his man, it was key. Six marks, two of those six contested. He also had eight clearances, seven inside 50s, and 528 metres gained. So not only his hard work uh, in the midfield, but really getting up forward, and he loves it up in the West. We've seen him over the last couple of years. He loves the odd goal or two up there. Uh, if you were listening to me on at 96.5 in FM on the Friday Sports Fest, I did mention that he loves the odd goal. He plays well in the West, always around the football, an absolute ball magnet. And that's exactly what we saw on Friday night. Folks, round seven, right around the corner. It starts on Friday night when the Saints take on Port Adelaide at Marvel Stadium. It's going to be an interesting game of football. I got nine out of nine tips for round six. So all the tips were correct. I'm hoping I get this one right. I'm going for Port Adelaide to get a gritty win on the road. Uh, Port to win by eight points in a thriller at Marvel. You gotta love footy. Like that recap and you wanna see more of my content, remember to hit that thumbs up, like, comment, and hit that red button down there that says subscribe. Much appreciated. For more content, follow me on my Facebook page and also my Instagram page.